good morning. This morning I'm going to be reading a little bit more of Claude in the City. So we're about halfway through the book. We've already looked at Claude visiting Betty's Beret Boutique. And then we had a look at him having a look around the art gallery. Do you remember the naughty sculptures that are in there? And finally we saw Claude saving the day by catching the sculpture that was trying to be stolen by the thief. So now we find out what happens after he saved the day. Soon the mayor arrived at the art gallery. Claude, you are a hero, he cried. He gave Claude a medal and whisked him and Sir Bobbly Sock off for a slap up dinner. Back in the kitchen of Mr and Mrs Shiny Shoes, Claude and Sir Bobbly Sock snuggled down in their beds. Claude closed his beady eyes. A little later on, Mr and Mrs Shiny Shoes came home from work. Where on earth has this medal come from? asked Mrs Shiny Shoes. Do you know anything about this, Claude? Look, he's fast asleep, laughed Mr Shiny Shoes. We'll have to find out in the morning. But the next morning, Mr and Mrs Shiny Shoes had already gone to work by the time Claude woke up. He looked around for Sir Bobbly Sock, who normally helped him put on his beret. He would do this very importantly, as it was a very important job. That morning, however, Sir Bobbly Sock did not do his job very importantly. In fact, he didn't do it at all. He just laid in bed like a sad, sick sock. Claude looked at him very closely and frowned. Sir Bobbly Sock did have the habit of sometimes pretending to be poorly. He would lie there all cross-eyed and floppy, waiting for Claude to find him and make a big fuss. Hmm, said Claude, and he poked Sir Bobbly Sock in the tummy. Hmm, he said again, and he prodded Sir Bobbly Sock's bobbles. Oh dear. Hmm, he said for the third time, and he took Sir Bobbly Sock's temperature with a banana. <laughs> Don't think that's how you take a temperature. <laughs> Claude thought for a minute. Sir Bobbly Sock, he said, are you not very well? All that shopping and rushing around the city has worn you out. I think we should have to take you to the hospital. So he did. Claude didn't know where to find an ambulance, so he decided to make his own. He tucked Sir Bobbly Sock safely under his arm and put on his roller skates. Flashing his torch above his head and shouting, woo 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 woo, for the sirens. He skated to the hospital with Sir Bobbly Sock. They arrived in no time at all. The hospital was a tall white building which smelt of medicine and sticky plasters. Claude had only ever seen pictures of hospitals in books before. He thought that a real one was much better because it wasn't flat and drawn on paper. Claude popped Sir Bobbly Sock in a wheelchair. They joined the end of the long queue of people, all waiting to see the doctor. Oh, there's lots of people waiting in the queue, look. Not sure what's wrong with this little boy. <laughs> Claude didn't mind waiting because he had a tail to wag, but Sir Bobbly Sock grumbled until Claude got him a cup of milk and a biscuit to dunk. Eventually, it was time for Sir Bobbly Sock to see the doctor. He was a tall, thin man with a tidy moustache and something dangling around his neck. I am Dr. Ivan Aikenbum, he said. What seems to be the problem? Sir Bobbly Sock suddenly came over all shy, so Claude explained. Hmm, I see, said Dr. Aikenbum. 
Well, we'll soon get you feeling better again. Now, let me have a look at you. Claude watched closely as Dr Aikenbum prodded and poked Sir Bobbly Sock's tummy, listened to his heart with the dangly thing and took Sir Bobbly Sock's temperature, this time with a thermometer, not a banana. Claude sniffed haughtily. Hmm. He always found bananas were much better at taking temperatures. Dr Aikenbaum wrinkled his brow and looked at Claude. I need to take your friend for an x-ray so we can see what's going on inside him. You stay here and we will be back soon. And he wheeled Sir Bobby Sock out of the room in his wheelchair. Claude was now alone in the room. At first, he sat very still. Then his eyes started to wander. Then his paws, then his body. He started to look through all the cupboards and drawers. There were bandages and sticky plasters and safety pins and lots and lots of other exciting things. Last of all, he opened a tall cupboard and gasped. <gasps> there, hanging all alone, was a white coat, exactly like the ones Dr Aikenbaum and the other doctors were wearing. Claude reached in, took the coat off the hanger and put it on. I look just like a doctor, he said. And he twirled around to see himself from every angle. Just then the door burst open and a tall nurse rushed in, looking red-faced and bothered. Oh, doctor, she cried. Thank goodness I found you. Oh no, she thinks Claude's a proper doctor. Claude looked around to find the doctor she was talking to, but there was no one else in the room. She was talking to him. There's an emergency, said the nurse. With a deep breath, she told him all about it. OK, I'm going to stop there and we'll find out more about the emergency later. On Friday in class, some of us had a go at drawing Claude. So if you Google step-by-step -step drawing Claude in the city or something along those lines, um, you'll find a really easy way that you can have a go at drawing Claude. Just like this. So there's Claude that I drew myself earlier. Then what I'd like you to have a go at doing is drawing Claude as a doctor. There's Dr Claude. And then I also had a go at drawing Claude as a police officer. See if you can draw Claude in lots and lots of different outfits. And then when you've done it, you can send it over to me and I can post it on Instagram. That'd be fantastic. Have a lovely rest of the day and I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.